Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Thank you for joining us. And a uh, reminder that when you are listening to the Mile High Podcast, to make sure you hit subscribe. So whatever channel you are listening or watching, whether it be iTunes or it is uh, Google or Stitcher or whatever channel it is that you make sure you never miss any Mile High tick. And of course, you wanna rise up to Mile High Altitude and be with us in June. Mile High is coming early this year. Um, so milehighchiroregistration.com is where you can get all the details. I am super thrilled to have as a guest today, uh, a man that almost needs no introduction in the chiropractic world, uh, Dr. Tim Young has really, uh, I will say, I don't know if others will agree, but taken over the state of Oklahoma with chiropractic, <laughs> <laughs> with focus, uh, with, a, with, a fo with, with focus and with um, the state organization and really put a lot of energy into really championing true chiropractic, chiropractic philosophy, science and art in his area. And I have really am in admiration of his efforts, energy and glad to be on the journey with him. And he also spoke at the very first mile high event we had, uh, which was amazing to have him impromptu at the last minute. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Tim Young. Yeah, thanks for having me, Daniel. This is an honor to be here with you. You know, I remember that, that I remember that meeting like it was yesterday. You know, that was, that was a lot of fun. And, and the things that you've done with Mile High and the, the momentum and the things that you've created with the profession are absolutely remarkable. And I, I appreciate all your effort, you know, well, right back you know, at you. Just, just like you, when you feel like you have uh, such a great gift, when you've received an incredible gift as a chiropractor and to practice chiropractic, it, it's, it's the mo most incredible gift I've ever received in my life. You want to be a steward to the gifts you've been given, right? Well, I just, so, I just, I just did it. I just talked to Billy, Billy DeMoss uh, last week and i told him the exact same thing i said we've been given such an amazing gift and in my opinion if we don't share this gift if we don't get out there and, and perpetuate it this sacred trust then we're disrespecting the maker that gave it to us you know yeah. it, it, it wasn't and, and it, it's really not even given it to us it's loaned to us we're only here for a minute and i, and I just get up every day and i think if i don't do something to uh, benefit or perpetuate or lift up those in this profession, then I'm disrespecting everything that I've been given. And I just, I just don't think that's what we should do. I think we should give everything we got. That, exactly. I think of it the same way. And, and stewardship is, is a big, a big theme in my, in my sense of being, you know, so, and, and especially for the chiropractic principle. So now with that, let's have people get to know you a little bit better because they may know you from stage or uh, and know you from your programs, but they may not know what, you know, how you found your way into the chiropractic world. So, so first of all, how did you discover chiropractic? Well, I, you know, I, I'm originally from Southwest Missouri, you know, way down in the hills. <laughs> if anybody's <laughs> ever been there, you just shake your head going, what in the world? But through the years, we, you know, we moved from deep down in the hills, um, just, basically poor hillbillies and it's, it's kind of funny when you look when I look back at my life but then when we moved to the big city Springfield Missouri it's a town but that was when we moved to and my uncle um, was a chiropractor he was kind of a long another part of the family but anyway when I was probably in the oh I think about the fifth or sixth grade uh, I went and saw Uncle Bill just to get adjusted but I didn't know any what that meant and he kind of took care of me all the way through you know high school and wrestling and football and then when I graduated I was a bodybuilder you know doing all that he kind of kept me put together but again it was just going to get an adjusted by Uncle Bill knew nothing about it when I was 18 years old I was in a car accident broke my back it was a uh, pretty significant and I was uh, I was told um, by the orthopedic surgeons and the doctors that well you know your weightlifting days are done and you're probably going to have a, a slight limp for the rest of your life because of the way this fracture was well, you know, you got to imagine, Dan, you're 18 years old. You're, you just started bodybuilding. You've got your whole life ahead of you. And then you get told this news. Well, I went to see my Uncle Bill. And he said, uh, I told him what the doctor said. He kind of laughed. And he was what we call, you know, again, as I keep using this word for people that don't understand, but we called him, we called him an old country, old country hillbilly chiropractor. He didn't take x-rays. He didn't do exams. He just had this big pop belly. And he just put his hand on his belly. And he said, ah, lay down. And I, he started adjusting me. Six weeks later, I was back in the gym. Six months later, I'd won Teenage Mr. Missouri. And I competed for almost 25 years after that. But with that being said, I still wasn't going to be a chiropractor, right? I, it, it, you know, it was, the seed had been planted. And 
but it was never never a um, uh, a goal or something I ever even thought about I would ever do. Um, I went on to the Navy to become, I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. That was my whole world. And I was going to, that was, I mean, every, I lived, breathed, slept, Navy SEAL. And during a bunch of training and in the middle of pre-buds, I was trying to prepare and get ready to go into buds training. And, and, and I attempt this thing. I started having a lot of lower back pain, a lot, of, a lot of problems with my lower back. And a lot of people don't, you know, they don't know, but when you go into the Navy, you have a recruiter that they go over all this stuff. And I told him about my car accident. He said, yeah, we'll just not mention that or you won't get in. So they didn't even know anything about the previous accident. And they did MRIs and CAT scans and all this. And you got to understand, I'm 22 years old. I don't know, I, you know, today as a chiropractor, I know the whole picture, but back then I'm a young kid just trying to, you know, become a soldier. So they called me into the med, med office in 1988, Great Lake Chicago. And they said, well, we know you got a problem, but we're not sure what it is. Um, so what they're recommending is um, exploratory back surgery. Now, Dan, I'm 22. I'm pretty ignorant. I don't know much. I'm not very educated. I don't know a whole lot about anything. But what I did know that the, the words exploratory and back surgery should never be used together. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, and I looked at that lady and I said, uh, no, ma'am. And she said, excuse me. I said, no, ma'am, we'll, we'll not be doing that surgery. And um, she said, well, the only thing we can do is send you home. Daniel, and I've told the story a million times, and I can never articulate the true power of this moment, but God set his hand on my shoulder, and he said, you will be a chiropractor. And I had a knowing. It was an overall uh, deep vibration. I don't know how to explain it. I have no words other than at that very moment, I smiled, and I said, send me home. I went through that summer. I started, uh, that was summer of 88, um, January of 89. I started undergrad, and I never stopped till I got my degree. And it was, um, it was, that was what led me. So there were seeds planted, obviously, along the way. I knew, but it was, but it was, um, it was a calling. It was, I was chosen. Uh, and there was a divine intervention and there's not a, there's not a doubt in my mind with it. You can't convince me otherwise. So that was kind of what led me to, to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, um, I, I had the same experience. You know, I just feel like I was placed to be a chiropractor. Uh, for sure. And I, I know personally, I, I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for chiropractic. For, I, I had know that nobody could talk me otherwise. Um, oh. so. well, and, I, and, and I tell people all that, you know, I tell all chiropractors, I truly firmly believe this. We're all ordained to be chiropractors. We're right. all chosen. Now, whether, whether or not we step up into that role and accept our responsibility, that's what God gave us was choice, right? That was, that was one of the, that's the greatest gift and the greatest probably, you know, detriment that we've ever been given <laughs> is the gift of choice. And a lot of chiropractors choose like you. And like a lot of us in a profession, we all know each other. What's interesting is there's a circle of chiropractors that travel and we speak and we perpetuate. And it's because we don't have a choice, man. It's in us and we got to share. I think all chiropractors that way, but just some choose not to step into the role. Well, yeah. And it's a calling and you want, to, I really encourage people to live a life worthy of that calling, you know, of that gift. Now, yeah, congruent, yeah. Yeah. And so with that, how did you, uh, this year in Mile High, and I'm so thrilled to have you back, this, we're going to be focusing on the art of chiropractic. How did you get really passionate about the art part of chiropractic? Well, it's fascinating. You know, I get asked that a lot, and, and it is. It's my, it's like, it's what I breathe, right? But, you know, when I look back, you know, um, I, I really look at this. I, for some reason, you know, I, I, I say this a lot. I'm not very gifted on very many things. <laughs> I can't sing. I can't dance. Don't give me a basketball. I mean, I mean, there's this thing that I just don't do. But for whatever reason, adjusting made sense to me. Hands on, moving the bones. Even I, I hate to even admit this out loud, but I will. And try one. Hell, I was, you know, I've been going to a chiropractor since I was in fifth grade. I knew what I was doing, right? You know, that's what you think. You know, hell, try one. I was adjusting all my classmates to try one. I, I, I was never afraid of it. It was, it was, uh, it was, ah, it's just kind of an, an innate thing. But then going through chiropractic school, I had one of the greatest teachers on the planet. He's still alive. In my opinion, the greatest living chiropractor right now is Dr. Hugo Gibson. And he was my teacher. And this man was a technique god. I mean, he, his hands, he, his nickname was Thunder Thumbs, man. He, he just, you know, that was his whole world. And he taught us that. And then through school, I, I, I wasn't the best student, man. I was C for chiropractor. If I made B's or A's, it was a big celebration. But what's funny is 
I always knew how to adjust. And I would even have clinicians in school come and get me out of the uh, out of class or out of lab or something to, to go adjust them because I could actually move them better than they could move each other. It was just a God given gift, but it was raw and, and it was obviously wasn't refined. And then as growing through school, then I you know, get out and you start practicing and you start really working with patients and you, and you have a desire to help more. And then I spent a lot of time with, um, uh, oh shoot, I just drew a blank on his name. Um, uh, extremity, um, in Davenport. Oh, come on. Um, Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yes. I'll come uh, back. I'll, I, I, he's going to, he's going to be so mad. I've known him for 25 years. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I'll think of it in a second. But anyway, so I started working with other teachers and other, other, uh, you know, experts in the field and started working on it. And then once I realized, and this was many, many, many years ago, once I realized that the, this, the, 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 the focus on the adjustment, the, 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 what we do is, is in the results of us getting, just like, you know, you and all of us in practice, you start seeing those miracles and then you start fine tuning and you fine tuning and it's just become a passion of mine. It's like, you have to, you, you have to be able to deliver on the goods. You know, I have a, I have a, a, a very simple philosophy, you know, tell the truth, deliver on the truth. If you don't know the truth, you don't know what you're delivering on, but if you know the truth and you can't deliver on it, you're just out of balance. And so that's to me, the technique and, and, and what we do. And, and, and I'm with you. I don't care what technique you use. I don't care if it's Gonstead. I don't care if it's network. I don't care if it's diversified. I had to create my own name because I teach it in state associations and I had to have a name. So I just, basically, I just named it, you know, MS motion specific technique. I'm putting motion in the joint specifically. I, you know, that's awful creative on my part. I know, <laughs> but, but it, it, you know, it, it just through the years it evolved and, I'll tell you what happened, Dan. Tim O'Shea and I were teaching a, a, a continuing ed course in Boulder. Um, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago this was. And he asked me to come up and help teach with him. So I, I did. And, and at the break, I had somebody ask me to adjust him. So I'm adjusting him. And we had a crowd standing around. And they said, and, and one of the questions was, what did you just do? And I looked at Tim O'Shea and we looked at each other. And went, what do you mean? What did I just do? That was an adjustment. We've never seen that. We were baffled. And so we decided to start, you know, okay. You know, and they said, well, can you teach us this? Well, I guess. And I don't even, 10 years ago, however many years ago that was, all these years later, and I am all over the world. Well, whenever I can go back to the world, but I get asked to teach, you know, technique everywhere. And can, people are hungry for it. And, and so, the, you know, it's one of those things to practice. It's one thing, but then when you start teaching it, it's a whole nother thing. And then you put the two together and, you know, it's just my passion. I really, I really love it. Yeah. And I, I love seeing when um, chiropractic students learn that there's so much more to, and, and new docs also to adjusting than what they have been taught. Oh. Um, you know, we, uh, you and I had a great conversation at Sherman Lyceum uh, several years back about the 33 principles and yep. how impressed you were that Sherman was teaching the 33 principles and have them on the wall and, and all of that. What, what, what do you see in terms of us being able to influence um, chiropractors with the philosophy, especially since they miss a lot of it in school? Well, we, you know, there are, you know and I just actually I did a whole video on this to my group. Um, philosophy belongs in our hearts and you have to own it. You know, I just had I just had lunch with Dr. Gibson um, last two weeks ago. And, and you know, what's funny is he's, he's 76, 78 years old. Right. And, and he's been in practice. He's got a year and a half till he's in practice, 50 years. And I just got awarded. I don't know if you saw I got awarded um, a distinguished fellow of the ICA. I was real proud of that. He, he delivered that to me. But our whole conversation was philosophy. And without it, without it, the profession is dying. The profession is nothing more than physical therapist. And so here's. We, and when I when I talk about this, you know, if I say the word to you, Sigafus or Reggie Gold or Gonstead, uh, Fred Barch, you know exactly who I'm talking about. There's not a doubt in your mind. But, brother, I will tell you, I'll say those names in a group of students and they just look at me like, mm, I have no idea who you're talking about. Well, the reason because what's what those were the icons that helped deliver. They got it from BJ. They brought it to you and I. We still remember those icons. You know, Danny Epstein, you know, all these guys, they're icons, right? They're the ones that got the message, 
and delivered it to us. Because you and I, Dan, you know for a fact, we wouldn't be where we are without those icons right. perpetuating the, the message, perpetuating our philosophy, the sacred trust. Now who's doing it? Now who's doing it? And so the thing is, if we own it and we have it, we have to share it because if we don't, it's, it, it will die. It will die. And, and I don't, I, I very humble, humbly say this, and, and it sounds a little arrogant, but I don't mean it to, but then me, you, and there's, there's a bunch of stuff. That if we're the next Reggie's, we're the next, you know, Sikafus's. I don't know if we could ever stand in those shoes, man. I hate to even say that, but if it, if, but if not us, who, right? Yeah. So the philosophy is what's going to keep the profession alive. Without it, we're dead in the water. We're nothing but we're nothing but physical therapists, and that's the only thing the schools are teaching is physical therapy. And period. It's really true. Without innate intelligence, we're and that concept and understanding that and it's more than a concept, but understanding that principle, um, we're we're we'll be completely absorbed, and there's no difference between us and and the other professions that work on the spine. And that you you mentioned something to me about certainty. I will tell you that aspect of the philosophy, it brings so much certainty, you know, when you're taking care of a person. And that certainty is vital uh, to be able to change lives and to stand when you're telling a person, you know that you know uh, what you are telling them is in the best in their best interest of their, their health and well-being. For you, where do you go to find certainty and in, in care and serving? And where do you, why is it important to you? Oh, I, I you know. I, again, I just talked to everybody about this. If certainty is the most important part, most important aspect of running a chiropractic practice that there is, period. There is nothing more than certainty because if you're not certain about what you do, if you don't believe in you, if you don't believe in what you do, if you don't believe in the, the power that, that heals, if you don't own that, your patients will not own it because I'm telling you right now, Dan, and you know this, people do not come to you because of what you do. Right. No, they come to you for what you believe. They come to you for what you believe. They will follow you. If you believe it enough, they'll believe it. They're not educated in it. They don't want to be educated in it. That's not what they went to school for. That's not what their laws evolve around. They just want to be healthy and they want to go to somebody that believes they have the answer. And if you, if your certainty isn't strong enough, then they're not going to follow through the certainty where I get my certainty from is many places. One, I do it every day. I, you know, it's like, I'm as certain about chiropractic as I am that the sun will, the sun will raise every day, Dan, it there, I don't have to go out and go, I wonder if it's going to come up today. I don't have to, I own it. We all own it. But when I give a chiropractic adjustment, I am just as certain, no, without a shadow of a doubt that innate will be expressed, that that body will heal. That body has the potential to recover from whatever. And what's great about certainty, what's great about understanding the innate intelligence of the body not only does it give you certainty, but it also removes all the stress and pressure from your life. What do we got to worry about? NA's on the job. Universal's on the job. We're not. Here's the thing. If this is where chiropractors get in trouble, they think they're smarter than universal intelligence. They think their education is so much more uh, adapt to help. Them. They actually think chiropractors are actually they're the ones that are doing it. And it's, and it's laughable because when you really think about it, it's like, okay, so if you break your arm and, and, a, and a doctor puts it on a cast, who, who, who healed the bone, the doctor or you? And, and you know, and, and people don't want to, they want to remove themselves from the, the innate, from the inborn intelligence, and they want to be in control. Well, you're not. You're not in control. And, and what you can control is your understanding of who is in control or what is in control. And that is the innate intelligence of the body is always in control. My certainty comes from doing it every day. But man, I just actually, I just cleaned my desk. I've got life without fear. Are you the doctor, doctor? Um, the, um, uh, the biggest of the fellow within. I mean, I got all my green books above me up here every day. I, I, told, I told a doctor this yesterday, my young associate doctor. I said, look, I've been doing this 26 years. I see a lot of people. I travel, teach, and do all this. And every day, I read something chiropractic. I rehearse. You know, Aerosmith, how long, how long has Aerosmith been a band? I mean, for several years, you think they don't rehearse? You don't, Before a concert, they don't rehearse? Yeah, they rehearse. They, know, they, play, they played those songs a million times, but they prepare to deliver their message. And chiropractors, they don't prepare. 
They do not prepare to deliver their message. They go through the motions and wonder why. I call that, Dan, I call that a pop and pray and hope they pay practice. That's what that is. And so our, our philosophy and our certainty, if you're not preparing, if you're not rehearsing, if you're not really working on, on a daily, and it never ends, it never, ever ends. If you're not doing that, you're not giving, you're not giving hundred percent. You're only giving that half S good enough is good enough. And you and I both know that's not appropriate. Right. Absolutely. Your patients deserve better than that. You know, they, and, and here's the thing, um, Aerosmith. So they probably sang dream on, you know, tens of thousands of audiences oh. and tens of thousands of times. However, they know for that person in the audience, if for them, it's the first time they've heard Aerosmith dream on. And when there's someone that's sitting in front of you, you might have explained subluxation or innate intelligence or chiropractic to tens of thousands of people. But for that person that's spending their time where they could be anywhere else on the planet, their energy, their financial resources, and they're putting you, their health into your hands, it's the first time. And Absolutely. what you say, your words, your hands, may be the only ones that separate them from like what you said with like going to an experimental surgery. Like you might be that turning point very likely for that person may be the only chance. And like you have an incredible responsibility to, to deliver or share that with the, the greatest quality that you can to impact the direction of their life. Um, and that's, that, uh, that's more important than how well Dr uh, Aerosmith's gonna sing Dream On. You know, that day. Oh, well, but you know what? The, you know, and I, and here's the thing: and we all have our own song. I, I I I talk about this a lot. I said, you know, if you went to an Aerosmith concert and they started doing covers of Nirvana, you'd be pissed. You'd be like, well, wait a minute, this is not what I signed up for. Or if you went to an Aerosmith concert and the, the band came out and their instruments weren't quite tuned, you would be pissed. Like I, you know, I came to I came to hear you. I want to hear Aerosmith. And so as when patients come to see their chiropractor, they come to hear you. They want to hear your vibration. They want to hear your song. And you can't play someone else's song, first of all. Don't do, don't do procedures. Don't use a technique that doesn't resonate with you because it's not your song. And not only that, if you're not tuned, if you're not in tune with your philosophy, with your principles, with your, um, your conviction, with your health, if you're not in tune, then you're delivering half-ass song they're not going to resonate with that either, right? And so that's why we rehearse. That's why we prepare. That's why we get up early to take care of ourselves. That's why you and I are doing this, because we're giving back to the profession everything we can. There's passion in our voice, man. There's passion in our hearts. And when that patient lays on my table, look, I've been in practice 26 years, and I, I don't know where I'm at. I know I'm up seven, 800,000 adjustments. I mean, I've, I've delivered a ton. And that's not even including outside of the office. But when that page, just like you said, that was so important, Dan, when they lay face down, it's the first adjustment I ever delivered. And it's the, it's the, it should be the, the most specific, the most intentional, the, the, the best energy that I've ever delivered to anyone should be that one. And when that patient walks out, then it's the next one. And we get into a habit of going through the motions and we forget that those people got in their car, drove to your office, and they are depending on you to serve them. And just what you said, if you're not in tune and you're not living that way, then you're in trouble. It, 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 and the whole profession is in trouble. Um, and, I, you know, it's, you know, I'm seeing it. I see it in the UK. I've seen it being taught here. You know, they say manipulate the mid back six times if they don't feel better, refer. That's what this profession is going to. And if we don't do something as a profession, I mean, you'll see me, I post videos on Facebook all the time and I get in my soapbox and people think, well, here comes Tim Young again, jumping up and down on the soapbox. It doesn't affect me. Yes, it does. My daughter is a chiropractor now, Dan. Uh, she, just finished her, she, just, she just finished her second year. She can't keep up with all the new patients. She saw over 60 new patients in February. Wow. In, a, in, in, in an epidemic, in a storm, in all this stuff, 60 new patients. They, she can't keep up with them. She calls me going, dad, they're everywhere. How do I, how do I manage all this? And then you get a call down the street from a doctor who's been in practice five years and he's seeing 40 a week and he doesn't know where they're all, why they're not coming in because he's not in tune with his self, with his principle, with his, with his purpose. He's not in tune and he's singing someone else's song. And that's what we've got to get back to. And, and truly you're only as good as your last adjustment. You're only as good as your last adjustment. Absolutely. So, and, and, and may the ones you deliver tomorrow be better than the ones today. Um, for sure. And, and you're, the people you care for deserve that. 
So we talked about certainty. We talked about philosophy. It brings us to another area that's connected to those two, which is success. And you just talked about your daughter. I remember getting to to speak at Parker when your when your daughter was a uh, new school there. Oh, that's right. You were there yeah. speaking. That's right. Yeah, she was. She, <laughs> I, I think she was try two when you. She she was going from try one to try two. I think that's what. Yeah, that, like, I, yeah I, that's I, right. Well, this is divinely organized. Yeah, how cool is that? Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, success, being successful as a chiropractor. Sadly, you have the most powerful healing art in the history of mankind in your hands, and success is elusive to many chiropractors, where they find other ways that they feel they have to use other tools, resources to, to get, get you know to, to get success. So first of all, like what is success as a chiropractor? Well, I believe success is our duty. It is our obligation. We have to be successful, Dan. If the chiropractor is not successful, they fail. And if they fail, other people are looking at that and they don't want any part of that. So the profession is not going to perpetuate. Right. But as, a, as like you just said, why I, I, I don't get this is this is one thing that baffles me. A, a, people will go to their dentist. They'll go to a pediatrician. They'll go to their hell. They'll go to their veterinarian. They'll go to an orthopedic surgeon, a neurosurgeon. They'll go anywhere else. And this is how much it costs and they pay. They go to a chiropractor. Immediately, they start bartering. Immediately, it's a half price. Maybe can you do it for this? Oh, I can't afford that. Why? Well, it's because the chiropractors created that. We created it because we do not value what we do. Listen, it is absolutely ridiculous, in my opinion. And this is going to ruffle some favor feathers and step on some toes. So be it. I'm good at that. Hey, look, There's... you're not ruffling feathers and stepping on toes. You're not doing your job. Well, ex yeah. Ex <laughs> and I just, I just believe this. There's no reason, no reason that every chiropractor shouldn't have a million dollar practice. There's no reason because it's right there accessible to everybody. It's right there. And Dan, I haven't collected less than a million dollars in 15 years. And all I do is adjust. Now you can't tell me that I'm someone special. Don't give me the crap that I was, I was given a gift and I was this and I was that bull because I own a lot of million dollar practices and they're the same as I am. They have two hands, a heart, and they make an adjustment. And they believe in the innate intelligence of the body. The people get well. We do something no one else can do. The chiropractic adjustment is so special and so actually perfect. Look, I, I just saw this uh, yesterday. I was, uh, uh, someone posted a picture of Clarence Gonstead's first home and then the house he lived in when he died. Did you see that picture? No, I, it, no. It, was, it was so cool because it was this little bitty house and then, and then the other house was a compound. I mean, from the aerial view, it looked like a hotel. I was like, oh, no, that's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> you know, and, and what's cool is, I, you know, I, I posted a picture here recently of the house that I grew up in, you know, down in the hills. Well, we, and I don't have it here in front of me, but I just, we, my, uh, our home just made the cover of 405 magazine. Um, it's wow. pretty cool. So I'm proud of that. My wife is the one that did it, you know. But here's the thing. It's not about record what we did. We all should be successful, man. And, and success, the reason chiropractors have such a problem with it, because they don't value what they do. They don't value the adjustment. They've never had to pay for it. You know, the chiropractors don't have to pay for it. So they don't understand how important this is. You know, um, it, that's really, that's really the biggest problem. And it drives me crazy. It absolutely drives me crazy. You know, I know doctors that, they, that when they see babies or they see um, children, they either give it away or they do it for like $10 or whatever that, not my daughter. It's fifty dollars a visit, just like everybody else, and she can't keep up with the amount of babies coming in, right? She owns what she does. She values what she does. She understands because she's lived it her entire life. The value of chiropractic adjustment. Chiropractors don't value what they do. If they did, then success is their duty. Then you take your success, and then you go do something with it. I recently had a doctor call me that he I was working with him, and he jumped by one hundred fifty thousand dollars in a year, and he's in a small local town, and it freaked him out. He's like. I, I don't know if I deserve this. You know, he's kind of having a hard time with it. So many chiropractors are that way. I don't think I deserve it. And I said, fine, take all your extra money, put it in a, put it in a big bucket and set it on fire. And he, well, no, I, I don't, I wouldn't do that. Well, then get over it. Go do something with it. Donate it to your church, build a wing, um, sponsor some kids in school, do something productive with it. But it is our duty as a chiropractor to be successful. That's how, look at BJ. Good night. One of the most successful men in the country at that time. You know, he was friends with, you know, um, all the greats because he was so successful. And no one came down on BJ about being successful. But then all of a sudden, chiropractors are like, well, if you're making money, you're doing something wrong. Right. Oh, right. it breaks my heart. It's just that. It is sad. Um, again, I, being a successful chiropractor is our duty. 
Now, here's the thing about chiropractic. It will, it will give you exactly what you put into it. That's what's great about this profession, man. It is a universal law. What you put out comes right back almost tenfold. I'm a living example of it. I'm a, I'm a, I, I, I don't know any other way of putting it. You know, I'll, 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 I'll echo two things on that. One, I, when I first started, I really didn't have a good money mindset. And like my first few months in, in practice, I struggled. And I remember my dad telling me, he asked me this question. He said, of all the healthcare providers in your era, because I was, I, was, I was admittedly struggling, he asked this brilliant question. He said, who should be the wealthiest doctor in your town, right? And I was like, that's such a great, I, I look it's a great question often because it's like, well, the one that's giving the most valuable service and you're doing an incredible valuable service that no one can do. You should be well, well rewarded for that uh, and doing it with excellence and chiropractors just don't necessarily get that. And then thing about practice, it is such an incredible mirror. It's a it, that's what's beautiful about it. It's also what makes it challenging is that it's a mirror. So like if you're having struggles in one area of practice, you got to look at yourself in the mirror because Absolutely. you've got the most powerful healing art and you can't make a, make it work financially or run the business. You got to, there's only one place to look and one place to point a finger, which is yourself and figure out what you have to solve for you. Uh, Cause there's no shortage of spines distorted for sure. No, you know? no. And it, <laughs> You know what? And there, we are barely even scratching the surface. And there's, you know, you know, I heard this said that 10% of the chiropractors make 9%, 90% of all the money. That's freaking, that, you know, and, and I really, I, I think that's pretty fairly accurate. It, and it's, but it's ridiculous. It doesn't hold water. It doesn't make any sense. You know, there, there's no reason. Like you said, we have something that no one else has. No one else has. We, you know, God said it. If, if, if the adjustment's not working, don't look at the adjustment. Look at the person who's delivering the adjustment. You got, like you said, the first place you start is in the mirror. Because I asked this question at my workshop this week, and I said, let me ask you all a question. Down the street from you, a chiropractic office is exploding. Down the other, the other direction, they're struggling. Why? Mm -hmm. Same town, same city, same environment, same, same COVID, same snowstorm, same education, same school. Hell, sometimes the same coach. What is the difference? It is the value of what you do. You know, I got asked this question by a, a, a kind of a business coach that I worked with years ago. And he asked me this question. And this is really, really valuable, Dan. He said, you know who Bernie Madoff is, right? And I said, well, yeah, everybody knows who he is. He said, you know, he has a $30 million apartment in, in the top floor of New York. He goes, how does that make you feel? I, I wish he'd get pushed out of it, right? You know, he said, well, and the reason it, that doesn't make you happy is because of who he is and what he done. Absolutely. He said, now, Tony Robbins has a $25 million home on the, on the, on the, on the waterfront in Florida. It's a compound. Uh, he goes, good for Tony. He goes, exactly. Why? Why? Because Tony spent his life serving others and, 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 and he deserves, he deserves his wealth. He deserves his success. Chiropractors, listen, you spend your life serving others. You deserve the wealth and you deserve what comes with the success. That's part of God's plan. And, in, and again, if you're not accepting that and stepping into it, you're being disrespectful to our maker, to the one who chose you. He said, here, I give you a sacred trust. Go use it. Go do it. And, but, but, but don't hold yourself back either in life or in practice. It's, it's disrespectful to the universe, in my opinion. And I got, I got to tell you something because uh, you brought that up. I've been in, in that house. I've been there with Tony because my uh, dad was taking care of him. And wow. a, I got a really good lesson that I think people will gain from this was when I walked in and shook Tony's hand and, and said hello, I said, wow, this place is beautiful. And his knee jerk response was very telling. He's just, his immediate response was like, thank you. And I worked hard for it. Those were his exact words. He said, thank you. And I worked hard for it because you know that people will probably say things like, oh, you know, downplay the fact that somebody got this. Oh, it must be nice that you live in this nice place, right? That people, people I'm sure have done that to him and all kinds of things. So they do it as, as people do that with everything. Like, oh yeah, sure. They can have a successful practice or, oh, it must be nice that you have all these associates working for you or things like that. But like, you work hard for it. It doesn't get Absolutely. handed. It didn't get handed to Tony Robbins. It no. didn't get handed to you. You applied appropriate action and put your heart and soul into something. And not just for you, but like, cause you want to give 
to others and you have something that you were given that you, it's a calling to you. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's what people don't understand is, it, you know, Tony says that he's like one of my biggest heroes, man. I just, I, I love the guy so much. And, and what he says is, you know, if you want to, if you want to be hugely successful, just find a way to help a lot of people. Right. We, okay. Chiropractors. Good Lord. What more do you want? You've got the answer, man. You know, if, if, if we had, if we had the, uh, the uh, potential to do in gambling, what we do in chiropractic, we go to Vegas and never leave. Because every time we roll the dice, 92% of the time, we're going to win. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, you would never leave the table, right? Well, when you adjust somebody up specifically with intention, 92 plus percent of the time, you're going to see a positive result with that. What is that worth? Oh, my gosh. You know, seven out of back 10 surgeries fail, and it's a freaking billion dollar business, but yet we want to hold ourselves back. It's ridiculous. It makes absolutely no sense. It makes no sense. Chiropractors, in my opinion, chiropractors should be the most successful physicians on the planet. No one should touch what we do, but we're holding ourselves back. You know, I, I don't feel guilty at all. I have people coming to this home that I'm sitting in right now. You know, we just built it and I'm very proud of what I've accomplished, but I will not, I will not, um, I will not feel guilty about it. I will not apologize for my success I, because I know the days that I spent struggling and working hard and not, and not, and not, and, and raise a family of five on, you know, like with nothing. I was there. I did it. I showed up and I showed up again and I showed up again. And Dan today I'm showing up, you know, all these years later, 54 years old, man, I'm just now getting the ball rolling. Well, I'm excited about what's coming in my future, but you got to show up. And I will not apologize for that. No one should, no one should right. apologize for success. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think people should apologize for not being successful, you know, for not putting the work in, especially if you're a chiropractor. I think it's disrespectful. I, I, it's disrespectful to the gift and the art and to the people that really like are counting on you. I, I've had people that, you know, it pains me. It pains me when I see a chiropractor that ends up being a bartender or something, oh. you know, it's, it's like a, a waste of the art and the talent and the gift. And so part of, I know why I put on mile high and put the energy in is because I want to help chiropractors. I have a, a huge drive for that because I've seen that. And I know part of why you put on focus is the same thing because you don't have to do that. You do not have to put the energy in. I know how much of a extra work and, it can, and a headache it can be. And it's a gift. And there's lots of things that come around with it that are great for sure. But you know, you don't have to do the teaching. You, you could just simply, you know, not do that or put on focus, but you do it because of what you know you can give to others and impact others' lives. So tell us about focus this coming year. I'm super psyched. I know I'm going. Um, I'm psyched to be sharing there. I'm going to be, my team's going to come. We're going to bring my team so they can get spizzed up. Tell us about Focus. Focus is, you know, and I appreciate that, Dan. You know, it, we started, this is our 12th year. And 12 years ago, well, well, it's, we almost about, almost exactly 12 years ago to this date, you know, right out here, right out here in front of the house, I was riding my bike. And I had been to Cal Jam um, for the last two, about last three years. And, you know, and I'm, and I'm seeing all this and I'm, and I'm hearing the message for the first time, you know, I had, I didn't grow up with DE. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of the things that a lot of the chiropractors did. And so this was my first big seminar, big event that I was hearing different speakers bring different messages. You know, we were there, man. We just like, Oh, what in the world is happening? Well, I'm riding my bike and I get 18 miles out. And when I turned around, just like BJ talks about thought flesh, it crashed down on me. Focus, the fountain of chiropractic understanding. By the time I got home, I already, I seen it. I, I visualized it. I already had my first talk done. And what it's done is, I, my whole point is to perpetuate the message. The schools aren't doing it. The profession is not doing enough of it. But, you know, guys like you know, Billy and you and Paul Reed, um, you know, I know there's there's a bunch of the guys that, you know, and what's, what's great is I remember when you called me and said you were going to start Mile High and Paul Reed called me and said, I'm going to start Cairo Fest and, you know, and, and, you know, Troy Dukewitz, he had the uh, epicenters. There's so many people that are doing this and, and, and it's amazing. But what Focus has done, it's brought a message from, from all over the world. But we have speakers come in from everywhere and you're coming in to, to, to share your heart. These people need it, Dan. It, it's these students. I, I get messages and I'm sure you have too. I've received messages from students and young doctors that they were either going to quit school or go out of practice completely and go into another profession until they come to focus and it completely changed their lives. It changed the way they look at it. My, and I, I, I'll have to share this real quick story. I'll make it fast. I know we're running on time, but the best testimony to focus that I've ever had a few years ago, 
a, a, two young ladies and two gentlemen came up to me and said, we got to tell you a story, something that happened last year. I said, we're CAs. And my doctor, our doctor, made us come to focus. And we didn't want to come. It was a Saturday, Friday and Saturday, taking our whole weekend. We're just going to come to this silly chiropractic meeting. So we made our boyfriends come with us. So the four of them sat in the very back row, all the way to the back. Fast forward, they came back the next year and they grabbed me and they pulled me to the side. So we need to tell you what happened. We came, we sat in the back row. All four of us are in chiropractic school right now. Oh my gosh, my heart just exploded. Even the young men, the only reason they're there, the girlfriends made them come. One was, I think, in a truck driver and the other one was going into plumbing or something or, 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 or you know, heat and air. And they heard the chiropractic message to the point that it changed the direction of their lives. And I tell everybody, I said, well, these are four kids that had no, no clue about chiropractic. Could you imagine if you are a chiropractor or in chiropractic school, the difference that these messages can make? Dan, we're saving careers. We're changing lives with this. It's bigger than us. It is mm -hmm. so much bigger than us. And you're right. I don't have to do this. Matter of fact, sometimes I question myself, <laughs> if, should I keep doing this? I have it's those days work, too, man. not alone. <laughs> it's a lot of work. But then every year, every year, my wife and I, you know, just like you and your and your beautiful wife, you guys, it's a family run thing, man. It's we're all in. And every year go leading up to it, we're, you know, we're like, oh, this is a lot. And then as soon as it's over with, we look at each other and go, cannot believe we thought about not doing this anymore. <laughs> you know, and it's just one of those things. But it's an amazing event. Twelve years into it. It's the last weekend of July. We picked the very last week. It's always the last weekend of July. And what's cool is you get to come to the brand new event center downtown. Oh, wow. Cool. It's brand new. It, it is amazing. That thing is enormous. So we went and looked at it last Thursday. We're so excited. It's going to be it's going to be quite an event. Amazing. Amazing. And so how do people register? You just all you have to do is go to focusokc.com. And it, it'll, it, there's a big, there's a big, there's three different icons, Focus OKC, Focus Foundations, and Focus Connect. And in Focus OKC, if you just click on that, it just, it gives you all the information, when it is, who's speaking, all their bios, buy tickets, it, everything. And then, and then just so people know, on the other side, Focus Connect, what that is, that that's all the previous videos from all the speakers uh, for the past 11 years, uh, you can go in and watch all those too. But uh, just go to focusokc.com, click on that, and all the information is there. It's real simple. We just, it's, it, we've made it so easy to just click and it's done. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. I'm just like, I, 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 I'm sorry to say, I haven't been there because the scheduling just didn't work. So I'm sorry. Oh, our schedule is always, yeah, I know yeah, our, like, our schedules are tough. Too, so to fire them up. So uh, I'm excited. I tell people, bring their teams to things because they need it. If, oh. if it helps, you bring your team to things because if people will die, it just pains when we talk to, oh, I got to pay for the flight. I got to pay for this and pay for the team's registration and then all that stuff. And look, if they get just one other person to convert to care or they answer the phone button or they get a little bit more fueled up about your practice, it is worth your team going. It's, it's such a simple, you know, simple oh. answer. You know? They're not paying. what they don't understand is Daniel that they're not paying for anything. <laughs> they're not paying for anything. First of all, it's an investment that has huge returns. You're going to write it off your taxes anyway. I mean, it's like you know, these business expenses. But here's what's crazy is, but they will, you know, they'll they'll go and they'll buy a three or four hundred dollar bottle of wine, or they'll 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 just they'll spend their money on things that do not return their investment. Right. And that's right. what that's what I'm with you. That's what pains me. It's like I you know. spent all this money doing this. You know, you went on a golf trip and you spent $20,000 on this golf trip, but you won't spend $3,000 on an event that will turn around and double your practice. Right. Or, or bring your associate doc. Or, your or associate. Yes, yeah, somebody. Yeah. Invest. Now you got to invest. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, it's, it's a business one-on-one -on -one thing. Well, I, you know, we're, we're super excited to be part of Focus. We're excited for Focus. And, uh, you know, what is there any last message that you'd like to share on this podcast today for chiropractors? Well, you know what, for the ch chiropractors that are watching this, you know, I've done tons of these, you know, with, our, with the world we live in right now, this is kind of the new thing, which is really cool because we can communicate to a lot of people. I actually get to spend time with these since we don't really ever get to see each other. But, you know, with Mile High, with what you're doing with Mile High, you know, I think everybody should go to every seminar that you possibly can get your hands on. You've got to keep yourself... Dipped. I had a doctor uh, several years ago. He said, all right, I came to this meeting. 
man, it's just an incredible meeting. And he said, I'm all spizzed up. I'm ready to go. And he said, but what happens is a few months goes by and then I just kind of lose it. What do I do? And I said, Kevin, let me ask you a question. I said, if it's 100 degrees outside and you've got a nice, cool swimming pool, what do you do? He goes, well, I get in the pool. Exactly. You get dipped, don't you? Yeah. Well, when you get out and you dry off and you get hot, what do you do? You get back in the pool. You got to stay dipped. And so that's what I'm talking about. Rehearsal. Invest, invest, invest. I was talking about my daughter earlier. She has, she is so successful. She has been to more chiropractic seminars in her young career than I have in all of mine. She doesn't miss anything. She is constantly learning and, and, and practicing and, and, and improving her art whether it be communication, her skill, her education, whatever it may be. And chiropractors, get to mile high, come to focus, do whatever it takes to get yourself more dipped, more educated, more fired up, stay tuned, keep rehearsing, and everything will come to you. But if you just sit back and go, good enough is good enough, well, then that's exactly what you're going to get. Exactly. It's so true. And you got to, you know, sharpen, sharpen the saw and, do things like get to like get to Tim's um, art of chiropractic programs that he does. Uh, this is going to be phenomenal. You know all the technique programs that you teach. People need to do that so they can get better at the skill sets for that person that's on the table with them. And uh, that's why I'm so psyched you're going to be speaking at Mile High, focusing on the art. Every speaker we've never done this before. Every speaker is going to be uh, presenting on the art from some different perspective, from upper cervical to Gonstead to network to BGI to all kinds of things. I'm it's so gonna, excited about it. I'm, gonna, I'm excited to learn phenomenal. personally. Yeah, I, I'm excited yeah. to learn personally. I mean, <laughs> I've been doing the same thing, and I, I I never get an opportunity to go do this. Like, there's so many things. There's these techniques that I know nothing about. I'm a sponge, man. This is chiropractic. I cannot wait to go. You know, and, and to your point, I just did an adjusting course, a, a class in my office. I like doing it there. I had doctors fly in from all over the country. And one of the doctors has a million dollar cash practice, a million dollars. He's been in practice for uh, 32 years. One of the most successful chiropractors. He flew all the way to Oklahoma City and stayed all weekend so he could learn just a little bit more. Now, if you take one of the most successful chiropractors I know that's going to fly in to spend a day getting a little bit better, what is everybody else's excuse? Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, it, it, you yeah. know, here's a guy that didn't really need to, but the reason he's so successful, the reason he has a million dollar practice, the reason he's loving what he does every day is because he shows up. And that's what it's about, Dan, is just showing up, man. And exactly. I can't wait to show up to Mile High. I can't wait to deliver and, and just and, and share my heart and sit as a student. I cannot wait to be a student in the audience, man. That's what I'm more excited about that than I am actually presenting. Uh, and I'm excited about it too, because we're going to do the same thing in breakout sessions with technique sessions. We've never done that. It's going to be a lot of fun for people. So, I'm excited. hey, look, everybody who's watching, listening, remember, hit subscribe. You never want to miss any Mile High Tech. And you can even get it all on an app now. So you can, you know, have an app that will be able to get all the Mile High podcasts. Get to Focus in July. I'll be there. Dr. Tim obviously will be there. There's gonna be, who else? It's going to be an incredible lineup. Oh, we and got you. Also, so uh, many. Yeah, and, and also for sure, keep changing spines, lives, and minds with chiropractic. The world needs you, uh, Dr. Tim Young. Thank you for stepping up to that calling, inspiring more doctors to do that, and we appreciate all you're doing for chiropractic. Thank you, everyone. We look forward to seeing you on higher ground in June, June 3rd to 6th. Uh, milehighchiroregistration.com. We will see you then. Bye, guys.